Greetings, friends. Happy Sunday to all of you. So, friends, it is finally happening. Millions of Americans may be receiving a one time relief payment very soon. A new stimulus bill has also been proposed and approved by many of our lawmakers. Please make sure, friends, that you watch until the end of this video for all of the details. I will also be giving away a $75 Walmart gift card four days a week. If you would like to enter the giveaways, simply click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. And friends, the more often you comment below a keyword on a video, the greater your chance of winning the giveaway. My first cabinet meeting, I told everyone that if their agency wants to issue a waiver to purchase something for their agency and what they have responsibility for, they don't have to use an they and they think they don't have to use an American company. Well, guess what? They have to come to the White House office and set up and then explain to me why they have to post that request, why they have to do that. And they're going to have to post a request publicly on our sites so American manufacturers and business have a chance to raise their hand and say, no, no, I can do that. Here, 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 here I can do that in my shop, in my town. Today, we're going even further. I'm announcing the biggest change in the Buy American Act in 70 years. Right now, if you're a manufacturer in a product that gets purchased by the federal government, the law says that has to be substantially all of that product should be made in the United States. But because of loopholes over time, you know what substantially, substantially all means when I took office? If 55% is made in America, it's substantially all. To me, 55% isn't substantially all, it's slightly over half. Today, we're issuing a rule to raise the amount of domestic content required to be considered made in America from 55% to 75%. Substantially all is going to start meaning substantially all. And today, we're also announcing a new framework for critical products where we know we need stronger, more resilient domestic supply chains. We saw during the pandemic that supply chain disruptions can put American lives and livelihoods at risk. You know, when we, when, we, we, when we needed the most, we were short on masks, gowns, gloves, ventilation, <coughs> and other essential health products we had to buy abroad. After a booming recovery in 2021, as America emerged from the lockdowns of the crisis, the economy in 2022 is at a crossroads. Massive stimulus packages passed by Congress in 2020 and 2021 helped keep the United States out of a deep recession. However, the influx of capital to businesses and individuals also helped prop up the inflation rate. The dilemma policymakers now face is whether putting additional money in the pockets of Americans will it drive inflation even higher or will it allow Americans to better cope with rising costs. Although the amount can be debated, experts say that no doubt that the $5 trillion released into the American economy during the crisis had at least some effect on rising inflation. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, stimulus payments had a quantifiable effect of adding about 3% to the U.S. inflation rate by the end of 2021. And prices have only climbed higher since then. Bank balances in the United States soared as stimulus payments were being distributed, and they still remain higher than their pre-crisis levels. According to both J.P. Morgan Chase Institute and the Washington Post, this potentially suggests that any additional stimulus payments will not go to basic needs as much as discretionary purchases, which may drive prices even higher. The clearest argument for additional federal stimulus comes from actual data recorded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which found that the government action during the peak of the crisis kept 11 million Americans out of poverty. According to the federal government, they have stated the most impactful programs for alleviating poverty were economic impact payments under the American Rescue Plan and unemployment compensation. So many U.S. states have taken things into their own hands. For example, California legislators are hashing out the final details of California Governor Gavin Newsom's proposal of $400 checks for residents who drive cars, while Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signed into law 
$250 stimulus checks for single taxpayers and $500 checks for joint filers. Other state legislatures, including those of Illinois, Idaho, New Jersey, and many more, are also considering various proposals. Former presidential candidate Andrew Yang has told CNBC News, money in people's hands for a couple of months last year was a very, very minor factor and that most of that money has long since been spent. And yet you see inflation continue to rise. Andrew Yang has long been a proponent of universal basic income. And he feels that additional direct payments to Americans will help keep the economy stable during future crisis and keep more Americans out of poverty. As Governor Gavin Newsom and California lawmakers are contemplating how to deliver the state's surplus dollars back to Californians who are facing high gas prices and many other rising costs of living. One group of advocates is pushing for another stimulus like payment for the state's poorest residents. A coalition of anti-poverty organizations is calling for the state to send a one-time payment of $2,000 per child to families who earn less than $30,000 a year. The proposal is sponsored by Assembly Member Miguel Santiago, a Los Angeles Democrat. It is intended to partly make up for the expiration of last year's expanded federal child tax credit payments. That expansion gave as much as $3,000 per child and $3,600 per child under the age of six. Advocates have also raised alarms now that the expansion of the program expired in December, citing new statistics that it's showing 1.7 million California children are at a great risk of falling back into poverty. It was one of the several crisis relief programs that came to an end last year, including Governor Newsom's administration's Golden State stimulus checks and enhanced unemployment benefits. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on these new checks? Do you reside in one of these states that's providing its own residents with stimulus checks or rebate checks? Please let me know in the comments section below. Well, my amazing and fabulous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video. Thank you so much for joining me here today. The winner of today's Walmart gift card giveaway is Linda Hernandez. Congratulations, my friend. If I have named you as the winner, please check your notifications page and send me an email. Or you can also send me a message on my Facebook page. Remember, friends, I will be announcing another winner tomorrow. So please listen for the keywords and enter them in the comment section below. And also do stay tuned for that video. Thank you so much, my friends, and have a wonderful and blessed Sunday.